What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers really blew a huge opportunity. And I mean, this team is just, they're so unserious. And it is so incredibly frustrating, right? You're at home. You're playing Sacramento, right? Look, I made the videos leading up to this game. I talked about how important and significant this game was. Talked about my concerns with the Sacramento matchup, right? Anthony Davis being 0-8. Leading into this game against Sabonis, uh, also their guards being speed guards uh, compared to our guards, are are we going to be able to defend and slow down the Sacramento Kings? And my hope was that we would. My hope was that we'd come out, we'd take this serious, we'd lock down, we'd focus, and we'd come out with this win. And if that happened, all of a sudden we're tied for eighth. We're right in the in the thick of it. We're right in the in the conversation, right? And all of a sudden. Everything just flipped upside down, right? The game started great. We're up 19. Lakers are, are, are cruising. Sacramento, they're missing shots, right? Lakers can't miss. It's, it's beautiful. All things are great. And then guess what? The collapse. Darvin Ham decides like, hey, let's try some big brain lineup. And it just completely has things fall apart. Um, Anthony Davis gets in early foul trouble and that kind of hindered him. And we'll talk about him later in this video, but it's just, again, the Lakers just are so unserious. And one of my big problems that I keep bringing up and now the three times we have played a skilled offensive team, we are oh in three. And that is the defense amongst the starting five and like the current kind of, I guess, rotation, the Lakers offensively, points-wise, are averaging a hair over 122 points, number one in the league. They are second in offensive efficiency. Problem is, is like I keep highlighting, is the defense. And when the offense goes cold and the offense can't keep up the offensive production, the Lakers' lack of defense, particularly in the starting unit, all of a sudden becomes an issue, and now we're not able to outscore our opponent, and we get ran through. And we've seen that happen against the Phoenix Suns, we've seen that happen against the Denver Nuggets, we've seen that happen against the Sacramento Kings. If you go and look at all the teams we beat with the current starting five, they were all terrible teams, um, or the Knicks, who are missing half their roster, who are currently a terrible team, <laughs> and then the New Orleans Pelicans, who they offensively can be very hot and cold. And it just seems like the Lakers have their number. But when the offense is clicking, as you saw in the first quarter, everything looks fine. The Lakers look great. Lakers look like the best team in the league. As soon as that offense goes cold, that's it. Lakers all of a sudden start getting in holes, right? And you've seen that in a couple of these games. Lakers end up getting behind. I mean, even in the Clippers game, it was apparent. Le but LeBron just went nuclear and was able to salvage us and save us from disaster. But I, I just, I don't think the current starting five is the answer the rest of the regular season. Maybe you can survive it the regular season, but I definitely don't think it's the answer come the postseason. I think either A, you need to inject and move Austin Reeves to the bench if you want to keep Rui and just maybe go bigger or go with Max Christie, right? Like maybe put a Cam Reddish in the starting unit. Just I know Cam Reddish, people aren't super high on him, but at least he's a 6'8", versatile point of attack. Give us some athleticism out on the perimeter. Could help with the rebounding because he can chase down the loose balls. Obviously, Jared Vanderbilt would be ideal, but we don't have Jared Vanderbilt right now. Another option would be to put in like a Spencer Dinwiddie or to put in like a Max Christie. You go that route, or you're going to have to tell LeBron, hey, dude, you, you have to play the three. You do. We need your athleticism. We need your capabilities. We need you on the defensive side of things out there on the perimeter. Because the problem is, which we keep seeing, and you saw it against Sacramento especially, is they are just targeting our front line of defense. Not, not the front court, the back court, right? They are basically seeking out Austin Reeves 
and just torching him because we don't have any foot speed out on the perimeter. When you think of Rui Hachimura, who was fantastic in the Kings game, him and LeBron James were the only two guys that showed up, right? So this isn't a, a knock on Rui Hachimura in particular. This is just the reality of what the unit is, right? Rui Hachimura, you don't think, oh, super athletic, super quick, twitchy, can chase down. But like, I mean, the guy's averaging like two, three rebounds a game as a starter at the three. He averages double that at the four. Why? Because he can go and help Anthony Davis on the glass rather than being out on the perimeter and he doesn't have the foot speed to chase down balls. So you lose that. So the only way you could do that is to move LeBron to the three, put Rui at the four. Now Rui becomes a mismatch at the four. LeBron's got to buy in at the three and lock down defensively, which that becomes a concern, right? Because he can as great as he's been this season, he can kind of take plays off at times on the defensive side of things. And you would need him to be excellent on the defensive side, right? And then, because right now, you just have teams seeking out Rui, seeking out Reeves, seeking out D'Lo, right? More so Reeves and Rui because those are the two guys that aren't great at fighting and navigating screens, those are the guys that aren't super quick-footed. At least D'Lo has like a 6'10 wingspan, and he can kind of deflect passes and stuff like that and be a little little bit of a deterrent. Again, he's not like great or anything like that, but he's a little better than Reeves and, and Rui have been. So you either need to change the starting lineup and then and kind of find a better balance, or you need to kind of put guys in proper position which is a problem that Darvin Ham has, period. I mean, Darvin Ham is just, he's just been so bad, man. Look, I've said this, Darvin Ham just, he doesn't understand rotation structure and lineup structure. He doesn't understand that you need to have a balance, right? You need to have actual structure and skilled position guys at said position. Rui has been fantastic. He's a four. He's not a three, right? Tori and Prince being out there with, with four other non-defensive players is going to make Tori and Prince a liability. Now, if you have Tori and Prince out there with a Jared Vanderbilt and like maybe a Spencer Dinwiddie and an Anthony Davis, right? And, you know, you you let's say you have Prince at like the two to where you know, he's a little bit of an advantage in that regard and he can shoot the three and you're playing him, you know, say 12 to 15 minutes in that role, but you have him surrounded with a bunch of defensive guys. Well, now his shooting becomes highlighted and actually becomes good, right? Because now it's like, okay, you have this balanced lineup rather than it's like, you know, D'Lo, Reeves, Torrey and Prince, Jackson Hayes and you know, whoever else, right? Like Christian Wood or, you know, you see Torian Prince sometimes play the four and it's like Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, D'Lo and, and Reeves. And it's just like, dude, like that's not, there's no offense. There's no balance. There's no structure there. There's, they're all doing, you're asking them all to basically do the same thing. Where's the defense injection? Where's the size? Where's the, the basics for basketball? And it's just, it's infuriating. And the Lakers just, they match up great against some teams, but they match up terribly against others. Sacramento, Denver, like these, these teams that have skilled positions and are kind of quicker, especially at like the, the positions of the guards and that three spot is a real problem for the Lakers. And the Lakers desperately need Jared Vanderbilt desperately because Jared Vanderbilt makes up for so much of what the Lakers lack his ability to cover so much ground defend the best player on the other team offensive rebound chase down those loose balls create other opportunities and second chance and even just uh other offensive opportunities for the Lakers through live ball turnovers or just turnovers in general right like all of these things just impact the Lakers so heavily and it's why, I mean, the Lakers' best lineup is still Reeves, D'Lo, Vando, LeBron, and AD. It just hasn't played, they just haven't played it as much. And even when everybody was healthy, Darvin Ham wasn't playing it a ton. And 
it's just it, it's so frustrating watching this Laker team just be so hot and cold. This was arguably the biggest game of the season thus far, given the circumstances, right? You win this game, you're tied for the eighth seed. You're only like a game out of out of uh, the sixth, right? You got tiebreakers over several teams in front of you. You go beat Sacramento again. Now you got that. like, And you had a real opportunity here to put yourself in a position to where you could realistically get the sixth seed and maybe even potentially the fifth seed. And it was like a... a like, oh, we are right. Like, bare minimum, we might get the the seventh, right? Because, if, again, if you beat Sacramento this game and then you go beat them again, that gives you two full games, right? And then you got the Warriors two more times. You beat them. All of a sudden, you get two more games over them. And now you're in a position where it's like, oh, here we go. But now you got to now make up for that Sacramento game. And now you also have to go into Sacramento and beat them which I don't trust them to do. They they can't they haven't been able to beat Sacramento. Anthony Davis is 0 and 9 now against Sabonis. It, and you expect me now what? Anthony Davis is now he's going to it's just it's so infuriating. Cuz again, this team is just so unserious. You just they just squandered a huge opportunity. Now is it over? No. Right? The Lakers and especially sports period, like a lot can happen, right? I mean, there was multiple times last season where it looked like the Lakers were dead in the water, and guess what? We're in the conference finals, right? So I'm personally, I don't, I'm one of those people that I just, it's not over till it's over. If you've watched enough sports, you've watched enough NBA, you know anything can happen. Dominoes kind of fall your way. Lakers decide to take it serious, or everyone comes back healthy at some point, and they just go on a run, Right, the the back half of March and uh, all of April, or, or well, the the games that are in April. There's only like seven games in April. All those games are very winnable. You know, so Lakers go on like that like February streak where they win. You know, they go twelve of fifteen or something like that, which isn't unrealistic. All of a sudden, like oh, the Lakers are in the the seventh seed or then the eighth seed or maybe they even have a, a chance at the sixth seed. Or, you know, some key injuries to key guys or whatever on other teams. Like, there's so many different possibilities that could happen, right? So, will the Lakers need some breaks? Absolutely, <laughs> All right? But I, I don't, I'm not, I just don't believe it's over yet. You know, until it's official, it's official. And even if the Lakers do get the ninth or 10th seed, again, I don't really trust them to get in the playoffs. But can they win two straight games? Absolutely course they can now all of a sudden you know what if you play okc in the first round you're probably beating okc and then you play minnesota i actually think the lakers would beat minnesota so now all of a sudden you're in the conference finals again so it's not over till it's over but lakers are making it very difficult to be just optimistic (laughs) and have a level of belief and again it's not it's not them losing right like if the lakers lost to like if you know, say say they won this game and they lost to the Bucks. I wouldn't be as mad, right? Like I would be like, hey, at least. Yeah. But the problem is this game was just so important. This wasn't just your typical loss. This was a loss that could be the difference between you being the ninth and tenth seed and you potentially being the seventh or eighth seed or maybe even the sixth seed, because you decided not to show up after having a eight nineteen point cushion. You decided, hey, no, nah, you know what? Let's give it to Sacramento. And Sacramento just ran through you. Can't happen. It just cannot happen. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What did you think? How do you feel? Um, you know, are, are you optimistic like I am? Again, I'm optimistic, but I'm being... <laughs> I'm not like overly optimistic, right? I'm not... I, I just, again, a lot can happen. Right. My thing is that I just more times than not, when you say something is definitive, you you end up with egg on your face. Right. So I'm not like people were screaming that the Lakers were done and it was over last season. And guess what? They all looked silly. You know, I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to say that they all lock them in They're Like I wouldn't bet on it. I'm not telling you to go sell the farm or anything like that. But could they still make the playoffs? Absolutely. 
But they got they're, they're running out of time here. They're running out of time fast. But anyway, again, let me know. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.